Today we're doing a lab where you guys are investigating charge. And I know you're probably already familiar with charge a little bit. You know there's positive charge from protons and negative charge from electrons. And that's fine. But we're actually going to quantify it and we want to be, um, you know, a little bit, kind of go into this, this experiment without knowing what you know about charge. Okay? So, on number one here, you're, you're going to be charging some objects by rubbing them through some different cloths. It says, do the pens have the same type of charge or different types of charge? And how do you know? Okay, now I know you're going to test them and you're going to say, you're going to jump to the, the conclusion, well, they have the same charge because they repelled or they have opposite charges because they attracted or whatever is going to happen. But that's not what you know. You you don't know going into this lab that opposites attract and like charges repel. So think about what you did, how you prepared them, and not on your prior knowledge. Because, I mean, you've just taken it for granted or somebody else's word that like charges repel and opposites attract. So think about how we actually know that, how this lab verifies that for you, okay? All right. Um... You can answer those questions on page one after you do this activity. Now, um, you're going to do it again uh, with glass and a pen. And then this part is fairly important. Okay, I know it's a big box full of words, but these are our fundamental kind of vocabulary things that are going to get us started. And we're going to be talking about this uh, for the rest of the year, pretty much. Okay. Um, and what you guys are investigating today is called static charge. Static because it's not moving. Okay. Once the objects are charged, they remain charged, and that charge doesn't go anywhere. Okay. And this goes on about how there's only two kinds of charge that we've ever been aware of. There's positive charge and there's negative charge. And you guys are familiar, like I said earlier, protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge. Now, just like everything else, we need a unit to describe it. Okay, right? A common a common unit so everybody knows how much charge we're talking about. When we say meter, everybody knows how far a meter is. When we say a newton, uh, we can think a newton of force is a quarter pound of force. Everybody agrees how much a newton is. Okay? Well, when we measure charge, we need to know how much charge there is. Okay? And so the SI unit for charge is the Coulomb. Okay? It's named for Coulomb. He was a scientist who did a lot of work with electricity and charge. Okay? Uh, it turns out one coulomb of charge is an atrociously huge amount of charge. Okay, uh, lightning bolts, which are giant charge buildup in clouds, right? They only transfer somewhere between five and twenty coulombs of charge when they strike. One coulomb is tons. Okay, and the reason one coulomb is so much is because the basic unit of charge, an electron or a proton. Okay, is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Okay, that's that's a really little number. Okay, so one one proton or one electron has this much charge. Okay, a proton is positive this much charge. An electron is negative this much charge. Okay, but you should be familiar with these. Q is the symbol for charge, lowercase q is the symbol for charge, and it can be positive or negative, and the unit of charge is the coulomb. Okay, now, um, this second part gets a little bit into how charge moves around, okay, and there's two kinds of things in the world, um, there's three really, but we're going to look at two, okay, there's conductors and there's insulators, and I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with this already, but a conductor, charge can move, okay, in an insulator, that's not the case charge doesn't move okay so this part of this lab goes into a little bit of well how else besides rubbing two objects together can you make something charged okay so it says two neutral conductive spheres are connected with a conducting wire uh, that means it will allow charge to flow and these conductive spheres means that charge can flow. A charged object is brought near them as shown below. So this charged object is going to affect these things. Now they're neutral. The reason things are neutral is because they have an equal number of pluses and minuses. And I want you to think about what's going to happen to those pluses and minuses if we bring a charged object that's all positive and all negative uh, or all negative up next to it. Okay, so these are neutral because they have an equal number of 
positive charge and negative charge. Then we bring this thing up close. This wire connects them, so these charges can move around. Think about what's going to happen, okay? And then uh, draw the result, okay? Um, number two says, hey, check it out. What if these conducting spheres were replaced with insulating spheres? And think about how that's going to affect the charge, okay? All right, and then there's this little math question, okay? An object has a net charge of plus 3.2 times 10 to the negative 15th coulombs. Does the object have an excess of electrons or protons? How many of these excess particles are there? Okay, remember the fundamental charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. So you got to figure out how many uh, of these, and this is the charge of a proton or the charge of an electron, depending on if it's positive or negative, how many of these fit into that. Okay? Um, and then there's this idea of what happens when we put charged objects on each other, how much charge is transferred. Now let me talk about this thing. Okay, that says plus four microcoulombs. Okay, so that that goofy looking U is actually the Greek letter uh, mu, right? We've seen it before when we've talked about friction. Uh, coefficient of friction was mu s. Well, when we use it as a prefix, okay, this means micro, and micro means times ten to the negative sixth. Okay, so when we talk about five microcoulombs, we're talking five times ten to the negative sixth coulombs. Okay? Hopefully you can work your way through this. I don't think it's um, too challenging. Let me know if you have any troubles, but when you do get it done, go ahead and submit it through eBackpack.